Alrighty, our next comic decided to take comedy class as a step towards his ultimate dream of swimming naked in a pool of vanilla pudding eating vanilla wafers. <laughs> He's also involved in the research project to determine the amount of wood that a woodchuck could possibly chuck given the circumstances that a woodchuck had the capability of chucking wood. I'm going to try saying that three times fast. And yes, he has heard plenty of times that he totally looks like that one guy from that one show. It's Mike Schwab! <laughs> excited to be doing this. I think it's going to be fun as hell. Not that I think hell would be all that fun. I think half the crowd is thinking, we're going to make it fun. Yeah. So, all right, so uh, all the comedians have been doing a great job. You guys have been laughing your asses off, right? <laughs> Not literally, hopefully. <laughs> like, oh, dang it, I've done laugh my ass off again. <laughs> all right, so when I heard about this comedy class, I got really excited. And I showed up on the first day and I looked around and I saw the age of everybody and I thought to myself, son of a bitch. <laughs> what is this, an ARP club or something? <laughs> it's like the time I signed up to go on a hike with the Outdoors Club in town. I showed up and a guy's like, this is the Obsidian's Club, where the average age is 62. I'm like, this freaking blows. <laughs> Like, at one point I heard this guy say, you know, after those three long and grueling days, it felt so good to finally reach the summit. Then his friend said, yeah, Skinner's beat was a bitch. <laughs> and it was well worth it. Good thing we had those mules. <laughs> All right. So, I moved to Eugene in July, and uh, one of the things I've been able to determine is that this is one of the coolest, most beautiful cities in the country. But it's also one of the whitest. <laughs> like, let's be honest, guys. This town is pretty much 99.9% .9 white people and 0.1% University of Oregon athletes. <laughs> and with the lack of sunshine, I'm talking about literally white. <laughs> like, I'm white now, but I showed up here with a tan. I got so tired of telling people I didn't know which restaurant has the best chips and salsa. <laughs> I didn't know where the pickup soccer was taking place. <laughs> Uh, another thing I noticed about the people in Eugene is that there's a lot of people here that are interested in Eastern culture kind of stuff, meditation and whatnot. I was in a, at an M's baseball game a while back, and it came time for the seventh inning stretch. And I got up and I got ready to sing, and I looked around, I'm like, what the hell? Everybody was rolling out yoga mats? <laughs> like, freaking Eugene. It's like, I never thought I'd find myself doing a downward facing dog while singing Take Me Out to the, Take me out to the Ball Game. You know what I mean? <laughs> What else? Uh, oh yeah, there's a lot of hippies in Eugene. <laughs> People. It's just kind of funny that they're still hanging on to this stuff, you know? I think with the amount of drugs these guys have taken, I think some of them actually believe it's 1969. <laughs> I saw a war protester the other day, and I went up to him, and I was like, you know, I wonder how much longer we're going to be over there. Then he's like, yeah, freaking Nixon better figure out a way for us to get out of this. <laughs> I was going to talk to him about the deaths of Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, but I'm glad I didn't. He would have been so devastated to hear that news. All right. Um, so, uh, what else about Eugene? Oh yeah, Springfield. <laughs> See, I'm not a big fan of elitism, but uh, I'm kind of Springfield myself. I mean, I spent a lot of time in South Dakota and Wyoming, so it's kind of deeply rooted in me, so I don't feel too bad. Um, I needed some, needed some comedic material. So I drove over to the Springfield Mall. <laughs> and on the way over, I saw a car with one of those things around the license plates that say, I'd rather be, you guys have seen these, right? I'd rather be mountain biking, whatever. And I thought to myself, I'm not so sure that's a good idea to announce that information. You know, say a guy goes to pick up a girl on a date. If he takes her out to the car, first thing she sees is something like, I'd rather be kickboxing. <laughs> you know, she might be like, oh, hell no, I see how it is. You'd rather be kickboxing right now. You know, if that's the case, I'd rather be getting the hell away from you right now. Uh, just saying, that's it. Just saying. Keep that in mind. Strategically. Uh, Alright, so, I pulled into the parking lot and I thought about the fact that there are two malls in this town. It reminded me of something my uh, favorite comedian Chris Rock said. He's like, you know, every town's got two malls. You got the white mall, 
and you have the mall white people used to go to. <laughs> and I thought it's similar but different here in Eugene, because here we have the white mall and the white trash mall. <laughs> They call it the Gateway Mall. I'm like, Gateway to what? <laughs> I'll let you guys finish that one. <laughs> All right, so when I came, when, uh, when I first went to the mall, I, uh, I saw the Santa Claus exhibit, and I thought about, I was like, the holiday season is upon us. You know, what a great time of year, right? I love the traditions. The gift giving, the decorating, and my favorite, Lying to children. <laughs> Doesn't it feel so good? I love bragging to my friends, you know. Dude, I so totally tricked another four-year-old into believing there's a guy that can travel around the entire planet in one night. What an idiot. <laughs> so much smarter. When I was a kid, I totally fell for this crap, too. I remember the first time a guy said there wasn't a Santa, I got up, I was like, that's blasphemy. You know, let's send his ass to the gallows. So what are the kind of crazy things you got for us? Is there any Easter Bunny? This guy's out of his mind. All right. Uh, uh, a question about the Santa Claus thing. It's like, how is this Santa Claus tradition still alive? You know, you think at, at this point parents would be smart enough to be like, uh, no. You know, like, and a few years later, parents sit the kid down and it's like, you know that whole Santa Claus thing we've been telling you about? Um, yeah. And in the words of Ashton Kutcher, you got punked. <laughs> Parents like giving each other a pound, you know? So got you. It's like, yeah, of course, kids love magical things and fairy tale kind of stuff, but it just seems weird. I mean, should we really claim that this stuff actually exists? You know what I mean? Um, anyway, move on. <laughs> uh, speaking of Ashton Kutcher and practical jokes, I love practical jokes. You know, I. I so awesome. Um, the thing the other day I was thinking about practical jokes, I was like, you know what? What the hell is so practical about a practical joke? <laughs> you know, you, I never heard anybody say, you know that trick you played on him was so, not only hilarious, but the way you used that shaving cream and feather, which is so damn practical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more thing about the Santa Claus thing. It's not necessarily funny, just an interesting observation. Like, you see those images of Santa Claus and the sleigh riding off into the sunset a lot, right? The other day I thought to myself, why is Mrs. Claus never riding along? You know, seriously, like, first of all, you know he could use the help. I mean, the man's out busting his ass, going to every household on the planet, and what's she doing, chilling at the house, like knitting a sweater or something? And it, maybe he's like, oh, you better stay back, this is too dangerous of a mission. You know, if that's the case, you think she'd be like, oh, hell no. You know, I gotta sit around this hellhole that has a North Pole for 364 nights of the year? Is one night you go on a kick-ass adventure around the entire planet in a flying sleigh? I'm supposed to stay here and hang back? Uh-uh. I'm coming along. All right. Uh, so, at the, the Gateway Mall, I was at the a food court, and there was a guy next to me, and he was working on his laptop, and uh, he, came, he came up to me, and he was like, hey, I need to go to the bathroom. you mind watching my laptop for me? I was like, sure. And then a second later, I thought, what the hell? Like, first of all, how does he know I'm not going to take it? You know? Second of all, what's he really think I'm gonna do if I see somebody taking his laptop? You know, like, imagine if it was gone, he comes back, he's like, I thought you were gonna watch it. I'd say, I did. Granddaughter watched it get taken away, but I swear my eyes on it the whole time as it left the building. All right. uh, so before Eugene, I was uh, living in LA, and where one time I took a wrong term, turn and I ended up in a wealthy neighborhood, at which point I realized that I was Lost and jealous in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, so the, way, the reason I lived in LA was uh, I went to a psychic because I wasn't sure what to do with my life, and the psychic said, "You know, Mike, I can totally see you in LA in the spotlight." And I was like, "Hell yeah!" I packed my stuff up. I got the hell out of there when I moved to LA. Sure enough, shortly after I, after I was there, I, was, I found myself in the spotlight. But son of a bitch, I, instead of me being on stage, I was running through a neighborhood and the LAPD helicopter had a beam on me. <laughs> Why don't rice? Uh, all right. Speaking of beam, this light's freaking bright. Uh, I feel like I'm getting nailed by the strongest Care Bear stare ever made. <laughs> Start calling this place the actor's Care Bear Ray. Oh. Uh, 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 
So in LA, I was a weather observer at LAX part-time. Difficult job that was. <laughs> Still sunny out there, Mike? Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Speaking of LAX, I flew out of there recently. Uh, I was nickel and dime by the airlines. You know, it's 15 bucks for an extra bag, seven bucks for a pillow and blanket. I asked for a glass of ice water, the stewardess came back and was like, that's gonna be a dollar, sir. I'm like, say what? It's like, yeah, the water's free, but the ice cubes aren't. It's like, and, and by the way, you're ready in that glass as well. So you probably wanna drink up. It's like, what's next? Are we gonna have to pay for the oxygen masks in case of an emergency? Like, the pressure drops, you're like, oh crap, I don't have 50 cents. <laughs> Anybody have change for a dollar? <laughs> All right. Last thing I want to say about my SoCal experience is that uh, this one time I was at the southernmost part of California at the beach eating a waffle. I dropped the waffle, my friend picked it up, and I'm like, hey, give my waffle. He said, no. I'm like, seriously, give my waffle. No. Finally, I yelled out, hey, let go of my San Diego. Uh... about is my childhood. It was a little rough. In fourth grade, I had a teacher who was horrible. She had up on the wall three categories with students' names. Students are awesome, students that are okay, and students that suck. And for the life of me, I couldn't get out of students that suck. But she even broke it down to a suck scale. She showed me, she's like, hey, you know, if you really suck, you're down here at the level of vacuum. If you don't suck so much, you're at the level of straw. She's like, keep working hard. Finally, she gave me the most, most improved award when I made it up the plunger. <laughs> so, uh, another thing that sucked about my experience as a child is that um, I had a bullet. Yeah, it was a mean ass.